Hi, my name is Claire Ryan. I'm the coordinator of the Midwest Invasive Plant Network and of the Woody Invasives of the Great Lakes or Wiggle Collaborative. In this video, I'll be talking a little bit about the invasive tree white poplar. The Latin name is Populus alba. I'll tell you briefly about the species history in North America, why it's invasive, and then we'll take a look at how to identify it. White poplar is native to Central and Southern Europe, Western Asia, and Northern Africa. It was introduced to North America in the late 1700s. Within a hundred years, it had been in introduced to most of the United States through the ornamental plant trade. Today, there are records of it in all of the lower 48 states. It was planted in both rural and urban areas, often as a windbreak between properties or along the edges of fields and pastures. Here in the suburbs, I see it mostly in urban parks and near intersections and other property lines. It isn't sold very much as an ornamental anymore due to its colony formation and its weak woodedness. The real problem is that once it's been planted, it can grow a clonal colony that will persist for generations. White poplar is dioecious, meaning male and female flowers occur on different trees. However, only females were imported for the ornamental trade to North America. So most sexual reproduction is actually hybridization between white poplar and a couple of native species. It is known to hybridize with both quaking and big tooth aspen. However, white poplar as a species doesn't spread long distances by itself. So if you find a colony, it's very likely that it was once planted there. White poplar will form clonal colonies through its root systems. These may consist of dozens to hundreds of stems that appear like a little grove of trees, but they're actually gen genetically identical to each other. The clones will persist and continue spreading long after the original stem has died. White poplar is mostly a problem in restoration projects where old farms or homesteads are being converted into forest or prairie. It's especially problematic in more open habitats where colonies can cast dense shade. In urban areas, its aggressive roots can damage buildings, pipes, and other surfaces. Now let's take a little bit look at how to identify it. White poplar's leaves are glossy and dark green on the top surface and white on the bottom surface. The bottom surface is actually coated with tiny hairs that give it a white appearance and a velvety feel. The leaves are alternately arranged on the stems and the shape is variable. Young leaves tend to be oblong like this one, while mature leaves can have lobes or sections. It's starting to form lobes here. The leaf edges are wavy or bluntly toothed. Then the leaf stalk or petiole is cylindrical near the base, but flattened near the leaf, uh, near the leaf here. The stems behind me are likely clones. Um, and the young stems have bark that's smooth and light gray. Mature trees, like the ones over here, can be very large, 40 to 70 feet tall, um, though they rarely make it to the high end of that range without breaking off. The canopy shape is usually broad and irregular, but some cultivated varieties are strongly upright and narrow. The bark becomes rough near the trunk base with age, often with rows of diamond-shaped divots. However, the upper bark remains light gray in color. If you happen to see catkins in the spring, there will most likely be yellow-green female catkins that are two to four inches long. If you have white poplar on your property, we do recommend that you consider removing it and replacing it with a non-invasive tree. Native poplars are great for more naturalized settings, but maybe not so much for urban. Learn more about control techniques and good alternatives to this tree on woodyinvasives.org. And please subscribe to our channel for more useful videos like this one.